before I start, I would like to have a word of praise, so I invite you to bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here before you to tell you how much we love you and how much we need you. And now when we open your word, I hide myself behind the cross of Jesus so your name and only your name be glorified and exalted this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One day, one person asked a little girl, do you pray every single day? And that little girl said, well, not really, because some days I don't need anything. And I was like, probably as a Christian, many of us are in the same situation. That we're going to look for God when we need something. And it's like God is the emergency contact. When you, we need something because we're in problems, we need something. But is that your reality? Are you looking for God only when you need something? Sometimes I see people that they don't look for God every single day. But when they look for him, it's like a shopping list. Lord, I need, give me, give me. Please help me. And sometimes we don't even dedicate time to praise him, to thank him. Because every one of us in our life, we have been for many, many problems or many things. And God has been there with you. But when you have the answer of your prayer, for example... You forget to tell, thanks God. Is that your reality? Pray is not only um, look for God when you need something. Pray is a relationship with him. Two days ago, my grandchild was playing, and he was playing for the superheroes. And he said, okay, you are this, you are that. And he was naming us like a superhero. And he was the leader. But when he was talking about that, I said, hey, Orlando, you know that your superhero is Jesus? And he said, oh, no, that and no. Jesus is not the hero. Jesus is my best friend. And you should come and see in my dreams, when I dream with Jesus, my best friend, I have so beautiful dreams. And I was like, wow. Did you see Jesus as your best friend? Because when you have a best friend, you are not just telling hi, goodbye. Your best friend, what do you do with your best friend? Go out, come to my house, I'm going to your house, and you have a moment to tell your best friend the bad things, the good things. Is that, is that what you do with your best friend? But this is the relationship that you have with God. Have God as your best friend. Your best friend never fails you. Your best friend never is going to another place to say, you know what she said? Because your best friend is confident. I have a beautiful experience when I used to work in a medical center in Brisbane. One day, he came a young man, came to the medical center to do an assessment because he, he needs to enter to the army. Sorry about my English, but you understand that, yeah? So far, you understand it? Perfect. So he came to do an assessment, and after he finished with the doctor, he came to reception to pay. And I shake and I say, okay, it's $110, you have to pay that. And he was looking at me like if he doesn't have any money, and he said, oh, can I, can I make a call before I pay you? And I said, for sure. He took his mobile phone, and I was listening exactly what he was telling on the phone. And he said, 
Hey, hey, dad, look, I'm here in the medical center and I need to pay $110. Can I use your credit card? And probably the father said, of course. And he said, okay, I'm going to pass it to the lady and you can, you can tell her what is the number. And I say, hi. Okay, I put the number. Everything was paid, the $110. I give him the receipt. But after I give him the mobile phone, he say, oh, thank you, Dad. And after, he told something that, you know, impressed me. He said, thank you, Dad. And after he said, I love you, Dad. I could see clearly the relationship that that young man has with his father. Because he asked him, he called him, for me, this is the prayer. He called his father, understanding that the father is not going to say, no, I don't have money for you. He has the assurance of the love of his father. But after he was so tender and say, thank you, dad. And after he say, I love you, dad. This is the relationship that God wants you and me have with him. But what, what is the way that you can be like them? When you don't know God, when you don't know God, probably you don't go with that confidence. But if you read the Bible every day, you can see in the Bible how many blessings, how many promises he has there just for you, just for me. The only thing that you, we have to do is just claim them. But if you don't read the Bible, you don't know God. And you will be your whole life, oh, I'm so worried for this. I'm so worried for that. Because you don't know God as your powerful God. I used to be very worried for every single thing. Even if the fly is going to the right side, oh, why this fly not going to the left side? This is an exaggeration. It's just to um, give you the proportion of my worries, you know? I was worried for every single thing. One day, when I was reading the Bible, I started reading so many promises. And I say, God has promised this, and why I have to be worried if God is promising that he will be with me? And I decided that day that I'm going to change my worries. Um, como se dice? Tu? Or como? <laughs> I would like to change my worries to trust. Since that day, I say, I'm not going to be worried anymore. When problems come to my life, I'm going to trust God. Because he said that he will be with me. One day, I remember that it was a doctor that used to send me some patients to my house. So I can see them because I am a nutritionist. And I... I see them, and after she said, look, I have been seeing my patient with good results, so I would like you to come here to Gold Coast, that is probably 45 minutes from my home, because I have so many patients that wants to see you, but it's too far from them to, to travel. So I said, why well, you don't come only one day to Gold Coast, and I book you. So when you come, it's only one day you have you know, your patience there. But I was so worried about that, and I said, well, what can I do? Because I have a new manager, because the past manager, she took her life off, and it's a new manager with new things and more work, and I was thinking how I can take one day off from my work. But after I remember what was the deal that I did with my God, I'd say, I'm not going to be worried anymore. I told you last time, I'm not going to be worried. I'm going to trust you. And I say in the morning, it was Monday in the morning, when I was praying about that, and I say, God, I don't want to be worried. I'm going to leave this in your hands. 
And I remember I went to work and I was in my computer. And it's incredible. My manager came behind me and said, Miriam, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah, sure. She said, Miriam, I would like to know if you would like to take one day off in the week. And I was looking at her. Probably my face was showing like, you know, something like I was shocked with God. And I said, only if you want. And I said, no, 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 it's fine. I'm going to take one day off. It's okay, it's okay. I'll, let me check and i tell you which, which day I can take. And when I went back to my computer, I nearly cried. And I said, God, it was that easy. It was that easy what you did for me because I was waiting for God to tell me, okay, Miriam, it's the time to talk with your manager. This is the time, the right time to tell her that you want a day off in the week. But God did everything for me and I didn't move any single finger just to do things. Can you believe? You know why? Because God is able. God is able to do things for you. And sometimes we worry too much. My question this morning is, what is your worries? Do you trust God? You say, oh yes, I trust God, but when the trials come to your life, you show differently. It's true or no? Because it happened the same to me. But the reason you don't trust is because you don't know God. And you have to understand this morning that God is able that God is your father. That God is your defendant. God is your lawyer. God is your best friend. If you see in the Bible, if you see in the Bible the promises I have here, that is say, God say in Psalm 46.10, if you would like to look for that in your Bible, if not, just listen. Psalm 46.10 said, Be still and know that I am God. Do you believe that? Be still means like Miriam, you stay calm. Because I am your God. I am able. Why you worry too much? It's because you don't trust me. Because let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that if you are worried, it's because you are not trusting. If you are trusting, you are not worried. And sometimes you are praying for many things for a long, long time, but God is waiting for your trusting, complete trusting, that you can go at night to sleep, and you can sleep like a baby. You know why? Because you know where your problems are. In God's hands. And he said, be still and know that I am God. Who is God? If you know God, you know that he's the powerful God. But he say here, if he say here, be still and know that I am God. But if you don't know who is God... How you know what he can do for you? Do you understand that? Exodus 14, 14 say, The Lord will fight for you. And the rest is amazing. It say, you need only to be still. The Lord, my God, will fight for me. So it doesn't matter what is your battle in life. It doesn't matter who would like to damage you, damage your family, damage your children. It doesn't matter. He said, I will fight for you and you will be still. In other words, he said, you don't have to do anything. He will do it for you. Like he did it for me that day. It's incredible, but every time God does anything for me, I feel like my faith is stronger. How many experiences have you had with God lately? 
Probably you say, no. I know that this is the God that did many things in the past for his people, but nothing for me. Are you reading the Bible every day just to know what he is able to do for you? Because if you don't, you don't read the Bible, you don't know anything about God. Another promise that we have here as well. Um, it say that in Philippians 4, 19, it say that he provides. What is the problem that you have? That you, what do you need? Just claim this promise. Sometimes we take our Bibles, come into the church, we open, and sometimes you bring the Bible at church and you don't even open it. And you go back home and you put it in the same place and during the week you don't read your Bible. Brothers and sisters, this morning God wants you to be encouraged to read your Bible every single day. And you will claim the promise of God that they are true. I tell you that God is real because I have been experiencing this in my life. God is your counselor. It's probably young people you need some counsel. God has been promised to be your counselor. When you delight, the light in the Lord, he will give you the desire of your heart. What means the light in the Lord? What means that? Means to do his will. Whatever you find in the, in the word, in the uh, God word, you have to follow. If you see that you don't have to kill anyone, you don't kill anyone. If he says, just keep my Sabbath as a holy day, you have to keep the Sabbath as a holy day. And you will see the promise accomplished in your life. But sometimes we need from God many things, but we are not able to do what he wants. It's happening in your life? Sometimes we have so many things in our heart that is taking the place of the Holy Spirit. I can call these things like um, rubbish, jealous, criticizing. You don't forgive anyone. Your low esteem. What is the rubbish you still taking in your heart. You know, I don't know, it happened the same to you, but when I am home and I leave the rubbish day, in the afternoon when I come, especially when it's summer, that it's very hot, when I come home, I can feel the smell that I didn't take the rubbish out. And it's smelly. And the whole house is taking the same, the same smell. Why? Because of the rubbish that I didn't take it out. And this morning, what is the rubbish that still is in your heart? Remember, the rubbish gets smelly. And when you go out in your work, in the train, or with your family, and every time you talk, you hurt anyone. Why? Because it's still rubbish in your heart. And if you will lie the answer of your prayer, you have to take all this rubbish out of your heart. Are you a very pride person? The thing that everyone is useless, only me are useless, as useful, useful. What do you do? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm the best. Oh, this job. If I do that, it was better. Remember, every one of us has different gifts from God. So what you do, another one can do it the way you do that. 
Why? Because God created you as a unique person. So pride is a rubbish. So you have to take it out. What about the yellow? You're jealous of others. Sometimes because you're jealous, you're not using your gift because you want to have the gift of my brother. I can't. You have your own and unique gift. What about criticizing others? You know, always I tell the ladies in the reception in the medical center, don't criticize them until you are in their shoes. And they say, Miriam, but you, did you see what? I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The way it was their behavior is because it has a reason. You have to try to help her. And the only, the only way that you can criticize others is when you are in their own shoes. Criticizing is a rubbish that we have to take it out. Are you still not forgiving someone that probably long ago didn't, go, didn't do good to you? Are you still with that in your heart? And maybe you feel sick and you're going to the doctor every time because I need Nexium because my tummy is killing me. It's because probably the problem is not, it's not in your tummy. The problem is in your head, in your heart, that you still hasn't forgiven someone who gave you that. But today is the day that God is giving you the opportunity to take all this rubbish out of your heart because he's the only able person to do that miracle in your life. You can do it by yourself. And if you have that feelings, it's because you're human beings. We are inserted in this world of sin. Of sin. That's why this is our, um, I forgot. <laughs> but this, is, this is what is the way that we, we like to go. Because we are in this world. We are sinners. This is the reason that every day you have to look for God. Not only in emergencies. Not only when you need things. Every single day you have to go to God and ask him a pure heart. Please, Lord, refine my heart. And maybe you are thinking and say, oh, well, Miriam is talking about that because she doesn't, she's not passing the trials that I'm passing through. She doesn't know what happened to me. Let me tell you, I have been passing for many bad experiences in life. I have to learn to be humble. I have to learn to forgive. But only in God's hands, at his feet, like Mary was, I learned to be humble. I learned to love more. I learned to accept people the way they are. And sometimes in hard, hard moments. But sometimes, you know, if we don't have the answer of our pray, this is what the experience I had, if we don't have the answer of my pray, it's because God is working on me first. He wants to do the miracle in my life first, and after, he's going to do the miracle. Do you remember when Lazarus was um, in, the, in the womb? womb? Tomb? This one? Do you remember that they have to take out the stone? Is it? Yeah. They have to remove the stone before the miracle occur. It's happening in our life. All this rubbish that I have been talking is the stone that doesn't allow God to do a miracle in your life. No one has telling us that being a Christian is, is hard. But this is the reason that you have to take 
and hold the cold hands. Just to feel the security, just to feel the confidence that you can do things because he is able. This world never will see Jesus if he's not through you and me. And what kind of God we are presenting to this world. You know how many people, how many people outside are taking their life out? And what are you doing? Just showing a God that doesn't have any power because you are, oh no. When you see people that they are sad, you have the ability to tell them, don't worry because God is able. My God is able to help you. Don't worry. I will pray for you because you have that strength to say that. Why? Because you have experienced God in your life. Brothers and sisters, do you know God? Or oh, God is an strangest to you. God is very far. No, oh, God answered the prayer for others, but not for mine. This is the same God who opened the Red Sea. He is the same God that in the past resucitó muertos. Rise the people. He's the same God. And that God is your God and is my God. I remember one pastor, he wrote a story. This is in Brazil when he went to visit one of the members. And he knocked on the door. And a little girl came and opened the door. And he said, yes. And he said, oh, is your mom here? Um, she say, oh, yes, but are you sick? And he said, no, I'm not sick. I'm the pastor of the church, and I'm coming to visit your mom. Could you please call her? Um, are you injured? Mm, no, I'm not. I'm perfectly well, as you see me. Uh, okay. And the girl continued asking him, in your car, you have any person sick? Or injured? And he said, no, I came by myself. Go and call your mom. He was a little bit impatient after the so many questions that, you know, doesn't, she doesn't understand why. And he said, well, if, if you're not sick and you're not injured, I don't think my mom is going to see you now. And I said, why? Look. My mom, she prayed from 9 to 10 every day, and she said, just call me only if there is any person sick or injured. Otherwise, don't disturb me. Oh, the pastor understand, and he saw the time. It was quarter to 10. And he said, now more than ever, I would like, I would like to see that woman who prayed. And he asked to that girl, do you think um, I can wait until your mom finish praying? And she said, yes, yes, for sure. Just take a seat. He went in and he started reading. And he saw at 10 o'clock, a door was opening from her room. And that lady, she came out. Hi, pastor, how are you? She said. But he was telling in the story, that now he understand what, why that lady, she was an example, whatever she got. Why that lady, she reflect God in everything she does. Because she was a woman who pray. She was a woman, a lady, she, who would take time to be with God. And today, more than ever, it's time for us to go closer to God. Because if you see the sign of the time, it's telling us that Jesus is coming soon. And what are we doing to be prepared for that day? Is your faith enough strong for the thing that is coming? Just to say, I belong to God and no one moved me from I, where I am. Are you able to do that? We have to strengthen our faith 
today more than ever. Because if your faith is strong, for sure you will be in heaven. Because you are ready to obey what God says in the Bible. Because you are able to show others who is God, who God is. You will be ready with your faith strength to walk for this well, shining for God. Because all the rubbish is going out and you leave that place empty to be filled for the Holy Spirit who is guiding your life. Because if you have all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, patience, and all this, the rest that you know, you're living accordingly to God. But if you are living in the opposite way, the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, so you are doing evil. And you see that? Pray is the more important thing. I read something yesterday that I would like to read it to you. They say, I want to be so full of Christ that if a mosquito bite me, it flies away singing, there is a power in the blood of Jesus. This is so beautiful, no? Because even like that, you are reflecting that you have God in your life. I don't know why would you like to remember this morning what I say, but you can forget everything. But don't forget that he is able. Don't forget to, sh to change your worries to trust. Because this is the only way that you really leave God to work in your life. And you will tell anyone to tell the world that God is able. You, will, you are able to tell God that he is a powerful God. Only when you give the Holy Spirit filling your life completely. With no rubbish day. What is the decision you're taking this morning before God? To be better or to continue going the same? You're going out and you say, I'm going to change my worries to trust. What is your worries? Is your husband? Is your wife? Or is your daughter or is your son the situation they are living for a long time? Or maybe it's because you can find a job? Probably is the problems that you have at work. What is your worries? Leave your worries in God's hands. And he will do it for you because he is able and don't let anyone to take your eyes from God. Because if you're worried because you're putting your eyes in your problems and not putting your life in God. And this is a, the, the thing that we need to understand and we need to, to, uh, to learn this morning. Are you with me? May God bless you. And never remember this beautiful verse in Ephesians 3.20 that was the Bible reading this morning. Now to whom who is able to do for more abundantly beyond, what a wonderful verse, no? Beyond all that we ask or think. Wow! Even more that we ask. This is the God that you and me have. Amazing God. Now to him what is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's able. If you trust him, you will see all these promises that you can claim from the Bible. 
be a reality in your life. Because I can say that this is true. But one more thing I'm going to share with you this morning. Because probably you say, it's not easy. Because I remember when my husband, my son, and my, myself, we went to Fraser Island. Before we go there, I remember that the Sabbath, before we go in there, it was a sunny day, beautiful day. And he said, wow, to go on tomorrow to Fraser Island will be a beautiful day as well. But the next, way, the next day was completely different. When I opened the window, I saw outside, and it was a windy day, it was a dark day, it was so cloudy. And it's not only windy, if you see the trees, it was like shh. And I was so worried. And I told my husband, well, we can't go to Fraser Island today. And I said, why? Because it's windy, it's raining. And my husband said, oh no, we can go that place. And they decided to go or no. And I was like, really? And my husband, yeah, we can go there. When we get there, he asked, do you think um, we can go to Fraser Island? To, sorry, we, before we go to Fraser Island, we decided to go to Keppel Island. So that day, my husband asked the guy there, do you think we can go to Keppel Island? And he said, oh, probably not a big island, but probably another island that is more close, that you will be safe there. And he said, oh, okay. He buy the tickets, and I was, are you sure we're going there? Because it's windy, it's raining, it's cloudy, we're not going to enjoy it. And my husband said, well, they decided to go, we're going. Oh, wow, I was a little bit worried about that. Well, no one was the only us, and I said, we are the only crazy people that are going in the weather like that. But we, we still did. Ten minutes before the ship gone, I remember it started coming a lot of people with bags and with luggage, and oh, wow, I'm not the only one who is going to die today, I say, because I was very worried. <laughs> and I remember that when we going into the ship, the boat, we going there, and it was a man in the entry of that boat, and say, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this... Um, this trip and I would like to tell you that this um, this uh, trip will be very tough and when he say that I went and see my husband and say did you hear that and he said yes go go and he was like pushing me and I was more worried even we went in and I was oh my god no I don't want to die I don't want to die I'm too, too young to die but anyway, we were there, and I was, you know, holding the, the, the table there. And after everyone came in to the boat, I remember that man who said that the tree will be tough. He was standing close to the bar. And without I say anything to my family, I went directly to that man. And I said, excuse me, you say that the tree will be tough. How tough? I would like to know to prepare myself. And he said, how tough? And he said, oh, I can lie to you. The trip will be tough, but will be safe. When he said that word, I rest. Oh, it's going to be tough, but will be rest. I came back to, the, to my seat. And that day, I remember... When the boat start going on, you know, people, when they would stand, they went up and come down. People was vomiting and, oh, the experience was not good, but I was very, you know, holding the, the table very hard. But the one thing that I learned in that trip is that the trip will be tough, but will be safe. And I remember that beautiful verse that is in the Bible that say, in this world you have troubles. But trust me, because I already get the victory. What is the way? Where, where is that? It's in John? John 16, 33. Why we don't look for that place? It 
someone ready can help me to read it? John 16:33. What is say that beautiful verse? Thank you. Is that God say this thing I tell you is like I can be lie with you. I'm telling you to prepare you that this tree will be tough. When you go into heaven, this tree will be tough. But another thing is, but take heart. I have overcome the world. It's like he say this trip to heaven will be tough. But remember, we'll be safe because we are in God's hands. Brothers and sisters, trust God with all your heart. It doesn't matter what because he has promised to be with you wherever you go, whatever you do. The only thing that you have to do is trust and claim the promises that is in the Bible because your God and my God are able to to do it. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, it's so good to trust you because you are God. May your Holy Spirit continue moving in our life in such a way that when we go out, we can show the word that you are able, that you are our God. Thank you for being here with us and continue with every one of us always. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.